today let's talk about a video transmitter connected to the 765 wing. Uh, not all flight controllers have video transmitter connections. Historically they didn't. The 765, if we look at the uh, pin layout again, we'll see right here we have ground, we have a voltage, and we have video transmitter, and it's the video signal to the transmitter that is here. Uh, just to recap real quick, we've used UART 6 for an RC receiver, used UART 4 for well, we haven't actually done this one yet, but we reserved UART4 for Mavlink for our six pin connector across here. And then you saw how I used a six pin connector for GPS and compass right across here, taking up UART2 and this these two pads on the I squared C bus. Then we used six pads on the telemetry radio, ground, voltage, which is not present unless the flight battery is connected. These two are with only USB connection. This is not. We used UART7 and we used these special purpose pins here, clear to send and request to send. And we had a six pin connector across here for the telemetry radio. So basically this build consists of three six pin DuPont connectors right across these 18 pins right now, basically. We did talk about these three UARTs between these two lines here. UART 8, 3, and 1. We're going to get right into number eight because we're over in this section now we're going to talk about the camera section of the 765 wing and like i said this is where the video transmitter goes in and the reason i touched on all of this is um we're going to steal this transmit pin right here off of UART 8 and we're going to group it up with these three pins ground voltage and video signal out of the 765 wing so that we get smart audio on this pin right here real quick I'm not sure I think this 9 volts is 5 volts if you jumper these two sides of this pad that may not be true this may be just ability to change this voltage I do not know right here on this pad that you saw me solder up during the solder portion I bridged the center and this side I don't know if that changes this voltage or not. I, I suspect it doesn't. I suspect this voltage can be changed from 5 volts to 9 volts by this solder pads here. But that's one of the main reasons I jumpered it to 9 volts. So I'd have 9 volts, 9 volts, and 9 volt. But there's also a secondary function to this pad. That's right down here. That switch can be switched on and off. This pad right here can be switched on and off. We'll get deeper into that when we get to the camera portion, which is along with this video transmitter portion right after. 
and that's right here is the inav user one function can actually switch this pad on and off that's the way i'm interpreting this i don't think it switches all these pads off and i'm really suspicious that these stay at nine volts no matter what this pad is like but i could be wrong there again you're seeing some of my first experimentations and working with this flight controller i've worked with ardu for almost 10 years nine years uh but i'm just getting into inav and inav hardware and just trying to share what i'm learning so we're talking today about these four pins right here. So let's look at the um, video transmitter. And if you look right there, down this video transmitter, these pinouts of this transmitter are labeled. Now, I don't like saying negative things, but I wish they had, had done their cable differently because you notice right off the smart video, uh, smart audio, sorry. Uh, that wire's black. <laughs> Down here on pin two, going from the bottom up, the ground wire's white. <laughs> uh, the, the voltage wire, the very bottom signal here, is red. That's cool. And what color the... Uh, video signal in is... Eh. That don't matter. It's frequently yellow. It's blue in this case. Uh, I'm really c complaining mostly because we do have a black wire here that could be ground. And the white wire could as easily be uh, smart audio. <laughs> and there were uh, two more wires in this connector. I forget what color they were. They were for the voltage over to a FPV camera if you were going to supply the voltage to the camera from this video transmitter and ground for that purpose of taking uh, video, I mean ground and supply voltage over to the video camera and bringing the video camera signal back on this blue wire and then powering everything from a two conductor battery connection on the red supply voltage wire for everything here and the white darn it ground uh, let's see that's anyway i'll get down off my soapbox now but that's basically the signals we're after is voltage here we're just going to use three we're not going to hook this t straight to a video camera. We're going to hook it to the board, the flight controller, the 765 wing. So we need voltage, ground. We need the video signal into the video transmitter so it can transmit it out. And we have a fourth wire, in this case a black one, that is smart audio. Smart audio allows us to uh, change the output of this video controller's power level, the frequency band it's on, and the specific frequency within that band that this is on from uh, our handheld RC radio and can see all those changes in the OSD in our goggles or wherever this video is going it could be going to a monitor on the ground and we'll see that uh, 
video and we can see the overlaying of the smart audio function. We'll be showing that here in a second. So basically in this side of my connection, and I'm going to turn this around uh, facing the way I'm going to plug it into the flight controller. And we'll look at it right in conjunction with our layout. So technically my blue wire on the far left here is the video in and that'll be hooked to this VTX pin right here on the uh, 765. The red wire is my voltage in. I'm going to hook it to this 9 volt right here. The white wire, I hate this. I like color coding. This can get somebody in trouble. The white wire is actually the ground and it's going to be hooked to this ground right here. And then the black wire again is the smart audio out of the video transmitter. Technically, this is the signal into the video transmitter. Sorry about that. From the flight controller, telling it to switch power, telling it to switch frequency, telling it to switch band, telling it to go in and out of pit mode, that kind of thing. So this is actually transmission from the flight controller telling the video controller to perform a function. So we're going to put that on UART 8 right here, output the transmit out of the uh, UART 8. So I take this and if I can see well enough and put it right across those pins there it is plugged into the flight controller and I hope you can see this uh, you can see the bottom of the LED pins that are outboard of this connector the ground the voltage and the signal for the LEDs and then we can see right here the signal for this blue wire, voltage for the red wire, ground for the white wire, darn it, and the white signal pin to the black wire right here from going to the video. This is out of UART 8 transmit and goes to the video transmitter for smart audio. Now, just to illustrate some of my other uh, statements, real quick, we'll plug in a USB connector. We're not plugged into the battery. And if you look, there is no power. On the video controller. Again, we have that situation where receiver was powered, GPS was powered, but until I plug in and turn on my flight battery, the, uh, you see there? Oops. Let me get that a little, get my hand off the antenna connection and put this over here when I turn on the flight battery that's when the video transmitter powers up again we're still illustrating that being able to go to the field put in a USB connector have the GPS power up and start locking up satellites but none of my other peripherals that take a lot of power etc are powered up yet and therefore my video transmitter is not getting hot anyway I'll go ahead and shut this back off so let's go in to um, iNav up here on the screen column 5 115 200 connect we'll go into ports 
And remember, we were talking about UART 8 in the uh, pinout. And so what we do right here to get that signal out of the flight controller to the video transmitter, we come right over here in the peripherals column. And we go here and we select TBS, Team Black Sheep. Smart audio click and then we save and reboot. And it comes back up, and there we are. We've got TBS Smart Audio on UART 8. So we've got our smart audio signal telling the video transmitter to change powers, change band, change frequency within the band coming from right here on UART 8, which we did by connecting TX8 from UART 8 to this pin right here to the video transmitter. Uh, if we were going to do something else with the video transmitter, we could use receive eight. We aren't. So technically receive eight is useless to us now also because we can't really, if we put another peripheral on receive eight, I don't know. It would be very highfalutin to be able to run an oh, signal in on receive eight. So we're going to say right now that we used UART six so far, four, two, seven, and eight. The only two, well, there are three UARTs we haven't used yet is three, one, and five with the caveat on five that it has a receive only. So you see, there can be circuitry doing a receive only. I just don't know if you can split a UART doing that. <laughs> you might be able to. Anyway, uh, just a disclosure right here. I don't use UART 3 or UART 1 in this build. So we are real close finishing up our pins on this so I guess the only thing left is me to uh, show you how uh, smart audio will power up this transmitter band A frequency 1 Power level one is what it's on, uh, as represented by this rotating display right here. I had to reset up <laughs> uh, to be able to show you the um, smart audio. I had to put, as you can see right here, a RC receiver back on the flight controller. So that six pin connector is again connected to UART six down here. And we have our video transmitter plugged in. We are powered from battery. Here we're showing uh, A11, which means band A, frequency one, power level one. Now the way smart audio works, and I'm going to show you the output of the video transmitter right here on the screen. So this is um, actually the OSD out of the 765 wing uh, with no cameras on it. We don't have any video at all, but we do have our values from the OSD set up. Uh, we'll look at that later. But 
what happens here I'll pick up my RC radio and if you take the throttle stick and put it at mid value and move it all the way to the left and then you bump the uh, elevator stick to the top you'll see a menu come up on the screen boom whoops there you go ah there we go and now we can go in and we're going to use this stick and if we pull down on the stick you'll see it goes down through those menus but if we move right on the stick it'll select that menu or moving left on the stick we will reverse out of that menu I'm going to move the radio away and I'm going so you can still see the transmitter video transmitter on the table I hope I'm gonna go up to features and I'm gonna go right and I'm gonna go down into video transmitter features VTX and go right and see there's our smart audio menu <coughs> excuse me uh, the th what's selected right now we can go in and out of pit mode if we like right there we want to change the band we can go down right here if we want to change the channel within a band we can go right here if we want to change the power level we go right here let's just go ahead and leave it right there and bump it to the right let's go it went from 25 to 200 You'll notice our display on our transmitter has not changed. It's still A11. We have to come down and click set. Click right on set and then click right again to confirm. And look what happened. A12. A12. We're now at the second power level on the video transmitter. If we go back up, go over again, go down, go set, go yes. Now look at the transmitter. We're on A13, third level of power. Uh, I learned something here. Uh, notice I'm still trying to put that stick over to change the power. It'll still go up and down. But it won't go over for the power change. Well, you have to go left. Isn't that something? It doesn't go round robin. I figured it would go round robin. Once it's on high power and you go right, it's end of the line. <laughs> you go to the left, it goes back down to high power, down to the lowest power. So we'll set 25 milliwatts again oops I also must have lost my band yeah I uh, I accidentally changed the band there. Darn it. Uh, I asked the little sky droid real quick to scan. And we'll just find real quick. I'm using a sky droid 40 channel portable pocket RC video receiver on my USB on my computer to pick this stuff up. And just that quick it can scan the whole band and there we are back to where we see our uh, smart audio we're still waiting for the sky droid video uh, search overlay to go off the screen there it's gone we'll go back into features boy I should probably learn this stuff before I try to describe it I didn't notice I had bumped that from a to R so now we're changing the band we'll go back to a 
So when I go back down here and hit set again, my, uh, when I hit yes to confirm, I'm going to lose video again because basically the radio frequency is going to change. I'm going to pop the SkyDroid video receiver into search mode real quick this time. So right stick, we lost it. We're starting to search for it again on the little, come on. Search, there we go. See a little red line going across at the top. That's the Sky Droid video receiver searching for the signal. It's just the easiest way. And then once it searches all 40 channels, it pops back. Hmm. Move that to the left a little bit. A little bit more to the left. One more to the left. Just to get in the center of the signal. And there we are. Back on band A1. And the same thing happens with the joystick for channel. Within the band A, we've got eight channels. We can go all the way to the right to eight. We can go all the way back to the left with the joystick on the uh, RC transmitter to one. That's it. Uh, to get out of this, you just go to back, click right. Go back down to back, click right. Go back down and click exit. Click Just click right on exit. Toof. Now you're back to your uh, just your OSD display out of the F65 wing flight controller. So I'm not sure what else I need to say about connecting a video transmitter, particularly this 5.8 video transmitter to the uh, um, seven six five wing. Just right here, like I said, we used signal, voltage, ground, and then a UART out to tell the video transmitter via smart audio how to change functions and then in iNav we set up UART 8 for smart audio so we could do those uh, that's the end of that story let's move on to the next